Hi everybody, I hope you all are doing great. First of all, I mean, thank you for the amount of support I'm getting from you all. This is an initial channel, but still the amount of support I'm getting and you know, and for many DP is actually becoming easy and definitely yeah, this is the motivation of this playlist, right? That DP is easy. I'm just trying to prove that DP is easy. It's just a hoax that, you know, people have made DP is difficult, DP is difficult. So it is actually like, I want you all to be converted into those people who will say that, you know, please let the interviewer give me a DP problem, right? That kind of spirit I want you all to build while we are going through this playlist, right? Let us, you know, go through this next problem, which is coin change. So the problem is saying you are given an integer array coins representing coins of different denominations and an integer um, amount representing a total amount of money. So coins are given and some amount is given, right? And coin is an array which is containing all the denominations, all right? Return the fewest possible number of coins that you need to make up that amount. If that amount of money cannot be made up by any combination of the coins, return minus one. Basically, you have to tell me that the minimum amount of, you know, coins you have, you have to use so that, you know, you are able to make a money, like uh, make a sum possible, right? So let us see that what exactly we are going to do in this problem. Full focus. Ke dekhna hai. Dekho. So these are the things they are giving us, right? These are the, uh, you can say, uh, uh, denominations they are giving us. And this is the amount we want to achieve, right? You can definitely see, right? There are various ways to create 11, right? One way is five times two and then one times one. That is 11. Another way is you can say two times five and one times one. Definitely the way which is giving you smaller, you can say option, you can say smaller way to make that sum possible. That is the way to go if you want to achieve this sum possible, right? Let us look at this recursively and let us try to analyze this problem a little bit more. And then we'll see this recursion and memoization and tabulation, everything, right? So let's get right into it. So this is the test case they are given, giving us. So amount we want to achieve is 11. Using any of these coins in any order possible, you have to return what is the minimum number of coins you can use to achieve this denomination. Let us analyze this problem and let's see it in detail. So full focus here. One possible way to achieve 11 is 11 times one. That is a possible way. Another way to achieve some 11 is you can say, uh, you can say four times two, right? Plus what? Plus what? Plus what? It is eight plus three will definitely be giving me 11. So I'll say that three, uh, one, three times one, right? So this is another way to achieve this sum. I can also say that two times five, two times five plus one times one. Definitely we are using only two, these, these denominations only I'm using. And you can see that if I use these coins any number of times and the specific number of times I'll here, I'll be using only three coins and I'll be able to achieve the desired sum, right? So this is the, you can say, these are some multiple ways to achieve a particular sum. Let us see that. How can we calculate the minimum amount of sum recursively? So I've modified this test case a little bit so that, you know, recursion tree is a little bit smaller. Let us analyze. So we want to make some six using all these coins, any number of all these coins, but I have to return what is the minimum number of coins I can choose, right? Now in the question, it is given that I can, I have infinite supply of every coin. You can see here, you can read here. You may assume that you have an infinite number of each kind of coin, right? Basically, I want to return is what? I want to return the minimum number of coins to achieve that particular sum. So six is the initial sum. From six, I have to choose the first coin. I have to choose the first coin. Can I say that for the first coin, I can choose one, two or five. These are the three denominations I'm having. I'm choosing one, two or five. All right. From this particular case, from one, can I simply say, if I choose one as the first coin, the sum remaining will be five. If I choose two as the first coin, the sum remaining will be four. If I choose five as the first coin, the sum remaining will be one. Let us explore this left side first. So if five is the sum which is remaining, can I simply say that as the second coin, I'm having again three choices, right? I can choose any coin at any time, right? So one, two and five. Okay. Okay. So if this is the case and five is the sum, which I want to achieve, definitely, you know, if I use one as the next coin, I'll be left with four, two as the next coin, I'll be left with three, five as the next coin, I'll be reaching zero. We'll come back to it, but let us explore this side first. Of course, we have to first explore the left side of the tree. So these are, this is also having three choices for its own three choices. What do we have to do for its own three choices? I'll simply say one, two or coin five, right? So if we choose one as the 
next coin, three is remaining, two as the next coin, two is remaining, five as the next coin, minus one is remaining. We'll come to it, but don't worry. Okay, full focus. From this three, there are three choices again. One, two, or five. Correct. This tree is going a little bit ridiculous, but don't worry. You know, we have to make this tree, right? And I, I'll, I'll be completely honest. I'll not skip through anything. So three plus one is four. Oh, sorry. Three is the sum I want to achieve. And this is the coin I'm choosing right now. The remaining sum is two. Three is the sum I want to achieve. And the remaining sum is, uh, and two is the coin I'm choosing. Remaining sum is one. Three is the amount which is remaining. And five is what? The coin I'm choosing, right? Three is the remaining sum. Five is the coin I'm choosing. I'll be left with the sum of minus two here. Okay. Let us explore again. This are, these are the three choices I'm having. You can simply say that I am choosing one, I'm choosing two or I'm choosing five. All right. Look at this. If I choose one as the next coin, the remaining sum will be one. If I choose two as the next coin, the remaining sum will be zero. If I choose five, the remaining sum will be, remaining sum will be what? It will be minus three. Okay. Look at this case fully. So one is the remaining sum. It is also having three choices. Now we'll have to, you know, backtrack. So don't worry. If I choose one as the next point, one, two, and five. If I choose one as the next point, I'll be left with zero. If I choose two as the next point, next coin, I'll be left with minus one, right? Because one is the sum I want to achieve. Say two coin I'm choosing, remaining sum is minus one. Five, if I choose definitely minus four is remaining. Right? Now, full focus here from this zero. Can I say that I have achieved what I want to achieve? How many ways are there to make a sum of zero? What is the minimum number of coins to make a sum of zero? What is the minimum number of coins to make a sum of zero? Can I simply say that? Yes. If you want to make the sum of zero, you have to select zero coins. You have to select zero. We have to return the minimum number of coins, right? If I am choosing zero, I have to select zero coins. Okay. If I want to make a sum of minus one, is this possible? No. So I'll return infinite from here, right? that infinite number of coins are required to make minus one because minus one sum is actually not possible, right? Negative sum which is remaining, we want to make zero, right? So negative cannot go. Minus four again, I'll return minus infinite from here. Oh, sorry, infinite from here. As big as possible because you know, it's not possible. Now look at this, one sum was remaining, right? If I choose any of the coins, what is the minimum I can make if I choose a coin on this point? If I choose a coin of one, I'll be achieving in zero plus one because I'm making a choice, right? Zero plus one. You can say coins. If I choose the coin two, infinite plus one. If I choose a coin five, infinite plus one. You can see if I want, if you want me to elaborate on this zero plus one, zero are the number of coins to make a sum of zero. But I want to make a sum of one, right? I'm choosing this coin, right? So zero is returned by this next person. It is telling me what is the minimum number of, uh, you can say, coins required to make that amount, which is zero in this case. But if, you know, I want to calculate my own answer to achieve this zero, I'm choosing this coin one. So plus one I'm doing here. So zero is what zero needs to be formed. And one is that I'm, I'm for, it is the cost to reach zero, right? This is the only one coin I'm choosing. So one. So what is the minimum for all these? Don't worry if you're not getting, like not understanding this, you will get everything by the time we reach here. Don't worry. Okay. So zero comma one, I'll return one. Of course, the minimum number of coins I want to return. So one. So now, can you tell me one thing? What are we actually returning? This one is telling that if you want to make a sum of one using all these denominations, only one coin is required at minimum. Is this clear to everybody? We are telling that if I want to achieve the sum of one, only one coin is required. If I want to see achieve a sum of, you can say, uh, zero, how many coins are required? Definitely zero coins are required to, you know, return zero. So definitely whenever we are returning zero, zero base case, you can say, I'll return zero number of coins are required to achieve a sum of zero. How number of coins, how, how many number of coins are required to reach, uh, to achieve a sum of minus three? Definitely are infinite number of coins because it is not possible. Now, two is what I want to make, right? If I choose one as the next coin, other people will be formed in one. So total number of coins will be one plus one. This plus one is, I am choosing a coin at this stage. If I'm choosing two directly, how many number of coins the remaining people are formed? Zero coins. So how many ways, like in how many, you can say uh, coins, am I able to make two if I choose two is this coin? So zero plus 
वन राइट प्लस वन इज फॉर माय चॉइस राइट आई एम आल्सो मेकिंग अ कॉइन चॉइस हेयर राइट सो माइनस थ्री इनफाइनाइट प्लस वन वॉट इज द मिनिमम ऑफ ऑल दीज वैल्यूज डेफिनेटली जीरो प्लस वन विच इज वन इज मिनिमम टू इज टेलिंग थ्री दैट इफ यूजिंग ऑल दीज डिनोमिनेशन इफ आई वॉन्ट टू मेक अ सम ऑफ टू ओनली वन कॉइन इज रिक्वायर्ड दैट्स इट इज इज क्लियर टू एवरीबडी असॉल क्लियर नाउ सो दिस थ्री इज गेटिंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इफ आई चूज द कॉइन ऑफ वन राइट नाउ अदर पीपल विल बी फॉर्म इन वन कॉस्ट If I choose a coin of one, other people will be formed in. You can say that one always returns. You can say uh, one itself, right? Uh, one always returns one. So I have to return one here. So one always returns one. So when one always returns one, what do I have to do? I have to return one from here as well. Okay. Minus two. Minus two is non-achievable sum. So it is negative. I return infinite. So can you see that three? If I want to make a sum of three, how many coins are required? I can either take a choice of one. and one coins is required to make a sum of like make the remaining sum which is 2 from 3 i can either make a choice of choosing a coin 1 remaining sum which is formed 2 is getting formed in what only one coin so how many coins did this 3 took to form so this one coin i'm choosing and this is the uh, number of coins these people are getting formed so 1 plus 1 which is 2 right so two coins if i make one If I choose two as this as the current coin, remaining sum which is one will be formed in only one coin. So how many coins for this operation? Two as well. So this if I choose this also I'll be making two. This also I'll be making two. This also I'll be. So basically minimum of all these choices plus one. Plus one is the coin what what is I am choosing. So I'll return what? I'll simply return two here because you know minimum of all these will be one plus one is two, right? So I'm returning two. Look at this four. So four. If we choose coin one, other people will form in two coins. If I choose coin two, other people will be formed in two. Always returns one. So you can see I'm also returning to memorization right now. So I'll return one from here as well, right? Now, if you're not understanding that, how? Why did? Why didn't I draw the calls here? Why am I directly saying that something memorization will happen? You have to watch the previous videos as well. And specifically, if you uh, if you if you want to know this, what is happening here? This is actually what DP is, and if you want to refer to this, you can definitely check out my Fibonacci numbers video. It is simpler to understand, and you'll get the logic itself that what is happening here. So two always return a result one. So here I can directly return one from here. Minus one is a negative number. Definitely infinite will be returned from here. What is the minimum of all these values? It is one. Plus one will be returned. Plus one. So two is returned. So how can we form four? Yeah, two plus two. I'm using two coins, and four is getting formed. Correct. Now five. If I choose the sum of one, I'll definitely be able to make, you know, the rest of the people in two coins. So if I may, if I choose the coin two, how many people are? How many coins are required to make a form, sum of three? Definitely three always returns two. So I'll return two from here as well. How many coins are required to make a zero? Look at this. This is the magic of dynamic programming. How many coins are required to make a zero? Zero coins. So I'll directly return zero from here. What is the minimum of all these? It is zero. And what will five return? It will return zero plus one, which is one. And is this true? Using one to five, can I simply make? You can say uh, the sum of five itself. Yes, using only one coin, I can definitely make a sum of five, right? So this is what we are trying to convey. I hope that it is clear now. I promise you that it will be clear till now, and I hope very much that it's clear till now, right? So six. If I choose a coin of two, definitely four sum is remaining. So four always returns two. So in two coins, four will be formed. In one coin, one will be formed. So, how many coins are required to make a six? Minimum number of coins. The minimum of all these values, right? Minimum of all these values, and what else? It returns one. So, it is one plus one. It will return two. So, six is formed by either one plus five. If I choose one and then I choose five, or six is also formed in five plus one. If I choose five and then I choose one. This is the whole approach of this problem. This is the whole recursive tree. I hope it is clear. At every stage, we are having the number of options. The number of options are just equal to the number of denominations we are having, right? And I'll try all the denominations and I'll try all the results. And now let us quickly understand that how we are going to write the recursive code for it. I'll first write the pseudo code. Don't worry. We'll write the pseudo code and then we'll move to recursion. Then we move to memoization. Then we convert it to tabulation and then we'll write the video. So let us get right into it. So for the recursive pseudo code, you can definitely see I'll create a function uh, which is which will I'll call it recur, right? I'll pass array here and I'll pass the amount here. The amount I want to achieve, correct? Now, 
I'll not handle the base cases right now. Let us handle a normal case. Look at this three. Three is basically making how many recursion calls? The number of people there are in this area, right? I'll not name it error. I'll name it this. I'll name this area as coins. Coins array. So can I say for int coin in coins for every coin in coins for every coin in coins what do I want to make if I choose this coin right int you can say uh, cost of you know making cost of making the re re remaining amount remaining amount right so first of all tell me what will be the remaining amount if I choose this coin here right remaining amount will be remaining amount will be it will be what it will be amount which I want to achieve AMT minus the coin I'm choosing right now this is the remaining amount correct and the cost the number of coins the minimum number of coins to create this remaining amount is what you can say count of min count I'll say min min count min count of those coins is what it is I'll recur for it recur here how in how many coins will I be able to make the remaining amount remain amount in how many coins will I be able to make it right now is this the minimum value now I'll you know keep an answer variable here right and it will be first pointed to uh, like infinite so I'll take the min because everybody is choosing the min of all the people so I'll do what answer is equal to math dot min of answer comma min count the person who is giving me the minimum result the minimum number of coins the you can say the choice giving me the minimum number of coins will be the ideal choice right and what will I return return answer is right now storing the number of coins any other can make plus one is my coin choice at this position so I'll return answer plus one this is the body of the recursion let us write the base case itself and I hope that body of the recursion is pretty much clear to everybody full focus here let us look at the base cases first base case is definitely if amount amount becomes equal equal to zero here in how many coins can I make the sum of zero zero coins return zero in how if 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 if, if amount amount becomes less than zero here can I possibly achieve this sum I don't think so I'll return I'll return infinite okay and these are pretty much the base cases right I don't think there is any other base case yes these are pretty much the base cases this is the whole recursion pseudo code which I have uh, which I have written here and let us quickly code this out and then we'll come out come to memoization then tabulation then we'll wind up the video right so let's get right into it so we are in the code editor itself. I'll quickly write public. I'll quickly make a recursive function. Recur. I'll pass integer points, points, and I'll pass integer amount. The amount I want to achieve. Right. I have to return. I have to return the minimum number of coins. I can the minimum the minimum number of coins. I need to make amount right to make amount right so what do i have to do integer answer is equal to initially i'll take a very big number and for a very big number i'll i'll, I'll choose 10 to the power 5 i'll know i'm not taking infinite i'll tell the reason just keep that as an abstraction those of you know what is an abstraction they know so i'll keep it as you can say uh you know as abstraction that i'm choosing 10 to the power 5 i'll explain it a little bit later i am choosing basically a very big number instead of like you can say integer max I'm choosing a very big number okay so which will definitely lose every time I take a min with anybody right so what do I have to do I'll choose what I'll try every coin for int coin in coins I am trying every coin this is a very important for each statement those who don't know what is a for each loop this is a coins array and it is having integers it is having integers this loop does what it selects integers one by one in their proper order so first zeroth coin will be selected one th element will be selected toth element will be selected one by one it will select every person and it will go inside this loop the number of people there there will be in this coins this loop will run only that many number of times i hope for each loop is clear to everybody right so i have selected a particular coin integer remaining sum sum is equal to remaining sum then sum is equal to what i'll simply write here amount i want to achieve minus coin i have choose, chosen right now and what is the cost what is the count of of making 
रेम सम काउंट ऑफ मेकिंग रेम सम इज वॉट काउंट ऑफ मेकिंग द रिमेनिंग सम इज वॉट आई रिकर फॉर इट यार आई आस सम अदर पर्सन आई पास क्वेंस हेर एंड आई पास द रेम सम हेयर राइट I'll pass this remaining sum here, and this will actually be what? This will be actually the recursion call I want to make, right? I hope this is clear to everybody. I'll make font a little bit smaller. I hope it is visible to everybody. So I need a little bit more smaller font. So let's make it eighteen. So, so this is the count of making the remaining sum, and this is the remaining sum I'm making. In the end, I'll return what? Answer plus one, right? Answer is storing the minimum number of coins some other person wants to you know is getting formed in and plus one is for this current coin choice right so this is the recursion body itself right let us write the base cases so if amount becomes equal equal to zero i'll return zero because zero coins are required to make make zero right if amount amount is equal is less than zero I'll return again. I'll return a very big number, one, two, three, four, five. Integer max value, right? I'm returning this, right? So, all right. This is the recursive code I've written here. Let us call this recursive function. Return recur for. I'll pass coins. I'll pass the amount as it is. And definitely, many of you might be having a doubt that I can use the same function while I'm creating another function. Here we have to make multiple functions, right? For recursion memorization. That's why I'm creating the. You can say some other function for this, right? Okay. Now let us try to run this code on the you can say sample test cases and see if it is passing. So it is failing. Let us see why is it failing. Uh, definitely, I am not taking the minimum. So answer is equal to math dot min of answer comma coins count of coins coin count of making remaining sum right. So I will take min and then I will return this min right. Let's run this code and I think now it will work. So that is exactly what we did in the pseudo case as well right. Now this is one of the case, right? If the sum is of course tens power, you know, it is if it is greater than tens power five or it is equal to tens power, this means that it's not possible to make that sum. You can see, can I make amount three using these coins? No, right? So two will not be able to make this amount of three, right? It will. It is not possible. So this is getting. This is what we are returning. So I'll simply do what? I'll store the answer in a variable, and if you can say if answer is greater than equal to tens power five. I'll return a minus one that it's not possible. Else I'll return the answer itself. I hope this statement is clear. If it's not clear, let me go to the board and explain it again. So it is working now. Let me explain the statement that what I have done here. So two is the only coin I'm having, and the amount I want to make is three. So three only choice is choosing a coin of two. What will happen? The remaining sum will be one. Only choice is choosing a coin of two. What will happen? Remaining sum is minus one. This will return. Infinite. This will return infinite, and this will return infinite in turn. That it will say that it's not possible to make that current sum. So this is what we are returning. And if somehow the sum which is getting returned from the overall function, right? Let us see in this. So in this overall function, if in this answer variable, if we are getting a sum with uh, number which is greater than equal to tens power five, this means that it's not possible to create that kind of sum. So I'll simply return minus one from here. That it's not possible, right? And before moving to memorization code, I just wanted to discuss that why are we taking this number and not integer max value here? You can see sometimes we are doing what we are returning answer plus one. Sometimes it is possible that answer is not there, so answer plus one will go integer out of bounds, right? Right. So if you do integer max plus one, you will receive integer min, which will be wrong. That's why I'm not keeping integer max here because it's just on the edge of you can say integers. And you can definitely see the maximum amount they they are giving us is tens power four. So definitely it is possible that you know even if they are giving me only one coin which is one, here yeah, th that can be covered in tens power four coins. So that's why I'm taking tens power five so that you know it is a big number instead of integer max value. I'm using this number so that we don't go integer of out of bounds whenever we do integer answer plus one any time. So this is the recursion code. Let's convert it to memorization code itself and then convert it to tabulation code itself. So to convert this into memorization code, definitely, what do I want to do? I'll simply copy paste this function and I'll pass. I'll instead of this recur, wherever I've written recur, I'll change the name to memo. Right? I need a DP as well. And what is the length of that DP? Can you see amount is the variable which is getting changed? So the number of you can say dimensions I'll be having is one because only one variable is getting changed in every recursion call. You can say this rem sum is the person who's changing. So DP will be one-dimensional, and it will be what? It will be the length of the amount because amount is what is getting changed, right? So it will be AMT plus one. I'll call it AMT plus one. Okay, okay. 
what i am doing here now what i uh, what i want to do here now instead of calling this recurna i'll call memo function and i'll pass dp array inside this i have passed the dp array inside this and now you can definitely see one thing i'll initially i'll do what i'll i'll i'll, I'll, I'll or let's zoom forward only dhyan se dekhna i'll pass this dp array here integer dp array i'll pass here and wherever i'm making this recursion calls as well i'll pass this dp array the only thing remaining is recall and remember so recall is remember i want to recall the sum if i have already calculated if dp of that particular amount if that amount is not equal to 0 this means that it's already calculated i'll return what i'll return dp of what amount and this is recall recall we are recalling the thing and remembering is what i'll simply say say dp of what amount is equal to answer plus 1 i am remembering it for the future uses itself and this is the memoization code itself i think we have done the correct code let us try to run and see if it is working compiler error definitely the word is not amt it is amount let's run this okay 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 so it is working fine let's try to submit this memoization code i didn't submit the recursion code because i know that recursion is not optimal right so it will not get passed definitely memoization is getting passed right so this is the memoization code itself let us try to convert it to uh, tabulation itself using the trick we have learnt so to convert this function into tabulation i'll simply do the trick i'll you know i hope this trick is very much clear to you if it is getting if it is beneficial for you all if you are able to understand finally that what tabulation and memoization is if i are able to convert memoization just do tell me in the comments i really get motivated whenever i get a comment so please i'll appreciate who is whoever is commenting right so let's you know convert this to a tabulation itself so uh, like i'm not copy pasting the function i'll create another function public tabulation public int tabulation i'll do what i'll simply say integer coin array will be passed as it is and i'll ask for the dp as well i'll ask for the dp and i'll for, i'll ask for what i'll ask for the amount as well the amount i want to make right amount i want to make i'll pass it as it is now the loop will start from here and there will be only one loop why because only one dimension is there in the dp and definitely you can see the loop will start from the base case base, base case is what if amount is equal to 0 so what do i want to do if so i'll start for integer i is equal to 0 i less than equal to amount i plus plus this is the loop i am having here all right now what i want to do in this loop is i'll simply copy paste whatever is here definitely this is the trick we use all the time right i'll simply copy paste this here okay i'll remove the comments because comments are already there so i'll remove them because they are getting cluttered a little bit and let me increase the font size a little bit more okay so font size is now less or let me you know reduce this and then increase the font size i hope that it will work right this management is also required because while making videos definitely i have to keep in mind that i am not covering the space right you all or you know it it is visible to you all right these all the things you know we have to keep in mind right and you know i am completely transparent so yeah so what is happening here tabulation is this right so in tabulation what do i have to do i'll simply say that i have copied all these things where the first step is wherever i have written return kya karenge yaar wherever i have written return i'll have to convert all the return statements to continue so i'll remember and continue so i am returning zero instead i'll do what i'll say dp of i is equal to 0 and continue this is the case of recall i'll remember i'll remove this right now this return statement is actually for when amount is less than 0 i is starting from 0 so i i is actually representing the amount itself so it cannot start it cannot be less than 0 at any point answer variable will stay the same this internal loop will remain the same this rem uh, this return statement i'll simply remove this as well because we are remembering and we are moving forward now let us see that what is happening here so one step which is remaining is wherever i'm calling memoization i have to access dp there so instead of this statement i'll simply write what rem sum dp of rem sum i'll try to access dp of remaining sum i'll try to access but one thing is missing right if this remaining sum can be negative this remaining sum can go negative right so if rem sum is greater than or equal to 0 then only i'll access this dp array then only i'll access this dp array else i'll access i'll say that the sum i am able to make is infinite right this is where i am handling the case of infinite itself that if remaining sum is greater than or equal to 0 then only try to access that dp index else 
say that it's not possible to make that sum and keep infinite there. Now, I think this is it for the conversion of memoization tabulation. I'll return simply DP of AMT amount. I'll simply return DP of amount and that will be the code itself. Let me quickly do one thing. Uh, I'll call for, I'll of course make a DP here. Instead of memoization, I'll write simply here tabulation. Right. And in tabulation, I'm actually, you know, amount I'm passing like this and DP I'm passing. Like, I'll pass just like in, uh, you know, memoization as well. I'll pass it like this only, right? So I guess it is now fine. I've just switched these parameters. Earlier DP was here, amount was here. I've replaced them so that it is similar to this function itself, memoization, so that you can relate to the, both the things, right? Let us run this and let's see if it is working. Amount is actually wrong. So I'll, of course, here, yeah, I is representing the amount in this particular loop, right? So yes, here also amount is written. So I'll replace it with I itself. And let's try it with the loop. You can definitely imagine uh, in this particular loop, I is actually iterating on the amounts. So that is what I am trying to convey, right? I'll name this area as coin, it's not coin. I'll name this as coins, right? Let's run this code. Let's see if there are any more errors. Okay, definitely AMT. Instead of AMT, I have to write I because I, if it is not clear that what is I here, here you can say I'm simply using this amount variable itself, but here I'm iterating on all the possible amounts, zero to amount itself. So I is the variable which is representing a particular amount itself. Let's try to run this code. Yes, let's try to submit this tabulation code and I hope that I'm using tabulation. Yes, definitely. Let's try to submit this tabulation and let's see if it is working. Okay, it is working fine. It is good in space and time both. And yes, this is the recursion. You can say memoization and tabulation code for this problem. So this is it. We have covered another very famous problem. You can definitely see 17K likes on lead code is not a very small number, right? It is a very, very big number for a problem. It is a very famous problem. We have you know, tackled another problem from our DP checklist. More problems are remaining, but don't worry. Journey will be smooth. I ensure that. Okay. So if you are enjoying the content, definitely share it with your friends. I have made a community. I've made a small community of all the students so that, you know, you can give, you can connect with me a little bit, you can say, uh, easier, like easily. So the thing is that you can, of course, give me feedbacks on, you know, how the videos are getting made. Some, you can say bugs, if you are able to, if you are facing in these videos, you can definitely to tell me those as well. Right. So the link to that community, I've made a discord channel basically. So you can find that link in the description itself. I hope you're enjoying this content and thanks a lot for this, all the support. I really appreciate it. This series will go on and, you know, we'll be completing 50 days in no time. So let us, uh, you know, end this video here uh, until the next video. Bye.